So imagine walking into a room and people recognizing you as the most powerful man in the world because of your collar. And this is no ordinary collar, it can only be worn once and it costs more than what most people would earn in their entire lives. Today's video, I'm going to break into three parts. First up, the military origins of the collar. Where does it come from? Next, we're going to talk about what exactly are collars and all the different types out there. And finally, in part three, we talk about famous men and their collar styles. And I'm going to go way back. Yes, we talk about that incredibly powerful guy that had that super expensive collar, but we're also going to talk about people like Shakespeare. We're going to look at some modern style icons and some fashion trends that I bet you didn't know where they came from. So the collar has its origins back in the high middle ages. What we saw were advances in armor and men were now wearing helmets. They were wearing chain mail to protect themselves. But there was an issue. There was a very vulnerable area even if you wore a full face helmet and that was your neck area. Thrusting weapons could easily penetrate so all of a sudden they developed the gorget. Now the gorget was a solid piece of metal that protected the neck from thrusting weapons. The issue with it though is it was on a very sensitive part of the body and it was incredibly uncomfortable, especially even if you had chain mail underneath it, if you didn't have a piece of cloth or material that would go underneath it. Now initially they would wrap clothing but that could lead to choking and it was incredibly uncomfortable and that's where they started to develop the collar. A piece of cloth that could go in right there to separate the skin from the armor. Now this may seem like an incidental piece but again it's touching the skin and it's something that would lead to irritation and the Men that were commissioning these to be made, everything was handmade. So they would have it made to their exact measurements. They would also want to make sure they didn't have any excess cloth because that would lead to just it being hot. That would lead to, you know, fabric wrapping up and getting in the way or leading to irritation. So it was something that all of a sudden you saw men starting to wear these collars, you know, even when they would take their armor off. And by the way, interesting fact. The modern military still uses a gorget. In fact, I remember when I was in the Marine Corps, I was issued a gorget before going into combat. I want to thank today's sponsor, Slick Collar, for helping make this video possible. Seriously, what a great sponsor for this particular video, right? Now, guys, I've been working with Slick Collar for years because I love what these guys do. You know that sloppy looking collar that falls under the jacket that looks like it has no life, that's flipping and falling all over the place? Slick Collar solves that problem. They bring structure, they bring the perfect perfect collar look with any shirt collar you got. I'm talking polo shirts, if you've just got a dress shirt that's fallen all over the place, especially if you don't want to wear a necktie with it, you want to wear an open collar that looks just looks great, you need to have slick collar. Guys, what I love about this product is you don't have to go out and buy a whole bunch of new expensive shirts. So many guys think, okay, my collar, it doesn't look good. It doesn't stand up. The collar is just, yeah, it doesn't have any structure. I need to go buy a new shirt. No, with slick collar, you take your existing shirts and you make them look great. And as you can also see, they now have a white silicone sleeve grip that's more in line with what you guys asked for. That's what I love about Slick Collar. This is a company that listens to you guys. They're constantly improving and making the product better. Comes actually with two Slick Collars. You're going to have one that's a little bit smaller and one that's a little bit larger. The larger one is perfect for your dress shirts. A little bit smaller one is perfect for your polo shirts. Although that being said, they are adjustable in the back, so they're pretty interchangeable. But I get it. Some guys just simply maybe they've got really small collars. That's where I think the smaller build actually is useful. Or if you've got a huge collar, which we'll talk about later in the video, then you want to go with the bigger build. That being said, gents, it comes down to ease of use. There's no sewing, no alterations needed. You simply slip this under your existing collar and boom, you look good. And the best part, gents, these things are a steal. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web when it comes to slick collar. Such an easy way to upgrade your existing shirts. You don't have to go out there and buy a whole bunch of new shirts. You simply can improve your collar by using a slick collar. Great product and an amazing price. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. Yeah, go check them out. Awesome company. Now, in the 16th century, we saw an interesting thing happen in the Spanish and the English courts. And that was all of a sudden, people started paying attention to these collars and having fun with them. Both men and women, it started to become a status symbol. Something that, hey, let's make it a little bit more flamboyant. Let's add some ruffles. Let's add some lace. And next thing you know, these things started getting bigger and larger and drawing more attention. What people really liked about this is it did a great job of framing the face. Most of the clothing at the time was very dark for practical purposes, but here around the face, you could have a light 
color, which basically would reflect the light, would shine and draw attention to the face. Now, for over a hundred years, flamboyant colors were the thing. I mean, just look at pictures back from that time period. Again, whether it was men, women, you had Shakespeare even jumping in on this thing. I mean, yeah, it drew attention to the face. They looked good, but eventually colors started becoming more practical again, 17th, 18th century. But then an interesting thing happened in the year 1827 in the United States. There was a woman in New York that came up with this really simple idea of detaching the collar and cuffs, by the way, from the shirt. Because here was the deal is white shirts were prized by people of means. Why? Because it was a clear indicator that you didn't work with your hands, that you worked in a very high level or you didn't even have to work and you could wear white. So those that did wear whites and a lot of people liked to look like they were upper class, they would uh, have to wash the stuff every single day. And you imagine washing an entire shirt, the thing would wear out. But this woman has a genius idea. Let's just detach the collar because that gets really dirty. The cuffs the same and we'll wash those separately. Separately. They even went, got better on this. They actually used what's known as celluloid. It was an early form of plastic and they actually created these plastic collars, plastic cuffs, and they were selling them very inexpensively. Now, if you still had money, you were taking your collars and your cuffs to get washed. They were made from linen. They had to be starched a lot. But again, this was a status symbol. It was a clear indicator whenever you had that white collar, you were a man of power. You were a man of money. And at this point, some of you guys may be wondering about the origins of blue collar and white collar. Blue collar referred to those men that worked with their hands. Blue collar shirts, indigo was used as a dye, very inexpensive. And these collars were also attached to the shirts. They were not nearly as stiff. They were very rounded, very soft collars, actually probably a lot more comfortable. But blue collars, especially still even today in France, are still associated with the working class. Now, getting back to the military, I do want to talk about it was World War I and World War II, which actually brought the demise of the collar. Men going off to combat World War I, they started getting used to those soft collars that they were issued with their uniforms. The same thing we saw again in World War II, there were just changes in where manufacturing was going to be focused at. And we saw the, you know, detachable collar really fall off after World War I and pretty much disappear after World War II. All of a sudden, collars started becoming softer. There was a wider variety and many men actually were deciding, hey, to start ditching the collar and going with t-shirts. So, we covered the military history. We talked a little bit about status. Now, let's talk about exactly what collars are. I mean, I've been using this word, but how do we define a collar? Well, when pertaining to clothing, the collar is a part of a shirt, coat could be part of a dress or blouse that fastens around and frames the neck. Another key part of a collar is it's made from a separate piece of fabric. So, we do not have a continuous piece of fabric from the shirt into the collar. They can be made from the same exact material, but they are separate pieces of fabric. Why this point is important is when it comes to construction, the collar is oftentimes one of the most expensive parts of a shirt. And if you were going to get that shirt adjusted, knowing that adjusting a collar, especially trying to make it bigger, is next to impossible. Now, you may be asking the question, how many types of collars are there? And the answer, there's actually an infinite number. And I don't mean that in jest. I mean, it really comes down, there are four measurements in the modern collar and if you adjust any of these, you can get a different style of collar. So, the four factors are tie space, band height, collar spread, and point length. Now, many of you guys that have followed my channel, you know that I used to own a custom clothier and all four of these can be adjusted depending on the customer. But to be honest, the tie space is we really didn't do too much here. If somebody came in and asked for it, I would widen it a bit. This is usually for a man with a larger neck. If he's going to be wearing a large necktie knot, then giving him a little bit more room though, it gives us the ability to adjust the collar. But really, this was something that we didn't touch. Now, the collar height, the band height, this was something on a man that had a very long neck or a very short neck that on occasion, we would actually heighten it or make it a bit shorter. Now, the collar spread and the point length, these are very important because simply changing this right here, you can go from a point collar to a spread collar to a widespread collar to if you want to adjust that end at the point, all of a sudden you've got curved, you've got club collars. This is where we get all the different styles, but I do recommend it just start in your collection. Go with the classic point or with a medium spread. You don't need to go with a widespread. A medium spread, in my opinion, is one of the most versatile styles out there when it comes to shirt collars. So, that leads us to the various type of modern shirt collars out there. Well, first up, let's talk about the classic point collar. So, right here, we're going to see an angle of about 50 to 70 degrees. 
and we're gonna see a point length of about 2.75 to three inches. Now this color style can be worn with or without a tie, although a tie is going to be the preferred way and it's the majority of shirt collars out there. Thankfully, these manufacturers have started giving you guys more variety, more options and one of my favorites is the spread collar. Now the spread collar, sometimes called the widespread collar, we're gonna see the angle here at about 70 to 140 degrees and the length that collar is not going to be as long. It's going to be about 2.5 to 2.75 inches. And I think that this is a great collar style if you are going to wear that dress shirt or that button down without a necktie. If this is going to be something that maybe you want to just wear with a sports jacket, pocket square, it's a really versatile collar. One of my favorites, to be honest, I highly recommend if you're going to get just a few dress shirts, make sure you've got a couple of these. Now you are going to see also cutaway collars. These are going to have an even wider angle. And this is if you really like to wear that full Windsor knot or if you just got maybe a face shape that really is going to work with this. Again, I would look up in the mirror. There are just certain people that they like this particular type of style. You can also wear this without wearing a necktie and it keeps the collar really right out of the way. Next up, we've got the button down collar and this is very similar to the point collar except for the fact it's got that button down there and the button is to keep the collar in place. This is a casual style. I've seen a lot of guys mess up a great looking formal looking suit with a button down collar. Understand it's casual. That being said, you can wear it with a necktie with a more casual suit in a more casual setting. It was made popular by Brooks Brothers. It's a good looking classic collar. Just understand its limitations. Now with the rise of dandies around the world, we've started to see the comeback of the pin collar. This is very rare. I made a few when I had a clothier upon special request, but it is something that yeah, it's you got to have the special hardware for it. It's made to actually be held in point. This is going to be just one of the I would say eclectic collar. This is a collar that uh, I do like to see on a man that understands what he's doing and it really can set you apart from the crowd. But again, you've got to have a collar pin to keep it in place. Now, occasionally you will see a tab collar and this is similar to the pin collar, except it doesn't need a pin, but it does have a button underneath there that's hidden that keeps it exactly in place. It's a very button down look, a little bit more formal, less you wear a suit and tie every day than go for it. Now, the most formal modern collar style is actually one of the simplest, and that is the wing collar. You notice right here, this is going to be a very rigid collar. It's been around for a long time, and you wear this with a bow tie, black tie, white tie, depending on how you're dressing that night. This is for formal or semi-formal wear only. This isn't something you would just wear to a suit or to an interview. It's a very particular type of collar. You're going to have to look around for it. Now, you're also going to see some other styles of collars out there. These are a little bit more informal, a little bit fun. Club collars, they actually get their name. They were popular in clubs, people that were part of organizations. They were actually, I think, first originated from schools. You're also going to see the band collar, which appears to have no collar, but it does have the band. And the band is officially a collar. This is something that was made popular in a lot of uniforms. Uh, but you've also seen a lot of people associate this maybe with, uh, I think, similar to the narrow collar or the mandarin collar. So at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a very powerful man who would wear a collar that basically would send shivers through anyone that was in the room with him, and that was Philip III of Spain. So this is the height of the Spanish Empire. This guy was arguably the most powerful man in the world. The guy did have some fashion sense, or at least he understood the power of the ruffle. Now you may say this and say, oh, what's the big deal about ruffles? But understand that the, the, I mean, the material made was actually a lot better than the material we're even using today. And it was so expensive. The design and the build of those ruffles, it could only be worn once before the heat of the body would actually cause it to, to break up and not be used. So they would build these for wear of one time. And they were more expensive than what the vast majority of people in his country even earned in their lifetimes. But you know, he didn't care. You know, he's like, he's a monarch there. End of the medieval ages. This guy was just, yeah, he was at the top of the world and it was something that everybody started jumping in on this. I mean, these things were huge for almost a hundred years. Yeah, people were wearing these ridiculous ruffles, not only in the collar, but also on the cuff. And don't be fooled, it wasn't only monarchs. You got, you know, Miguel de Cervantes, Shakespeare, Oliver Cromwell, Benjamin Franklin, even Abraham Lincoln was a fan of a good looking collar. Now you may be thinking, ah, oh, that's something old school history. No one cares about collars anymore. If you ever watched the movie Bullet, look at Steve McQueen. 
Okay, so this isn't the normal collar you think about, but the turtleneck right there, that is an iconic look. I mean, I, he just makes the turtleneck sweater in general. Uh, some Mariners made it pop. This was something I think when worn, a guy can really send a message. I know a lot of people think it doesn't work for them. Give it a shot, right? If this is a, if it may, if it looks good on you, you will just get so many compliments. Now, a collar can also be your signature look. The late Carl Langerfeld, look at his collar right there. I mean, you associate that you could take the guy's face out and that collar, that high standing white collar was just became synonymous. It was his calling card along with his sunglasses and that white hair. Point being is the guy just, yeah, he looked like a fashion icon. That being said, you don't have to look a little bit strange like Carl there. You could actually just look really good. Tom Ford consistently wears a strong, powerful collar. You want to look like Tom Ford? Yeah, go grab that slick collar. Again, I'll link to him down in the description. Awesome sponsor. But I mean, just seriously, look at, he's got a uniform. He wears those dark colored suits with those white shirts, occasionally wears a necktie, but when he doesn't, that collar stands up. He opens up those buttons in the front. The guy just, yeah, sex appeal just, just flows off this guy. But now let's talk about a fashion trend that I actually didn't know where it originated from till I read this story. And I thought eh, this is actually really cool. So any Manchester United fans out there. So I know a lot of you guys probably hate Manchester United, but you've got to give some respect to Eric Cantona. I mean, seriously, when you go look at his stats, you got to give that legend. I mean, they're in the 1990s. This guy made things happen. But what do we remember about him? Like, or what was the legacy that really lasted beyond him? It was that turned up collar. It was an act of rebellion and it became his signature calling card look with a simple uniform that he couldn't do much with, but he did flip that collar up. And there were so many young men. I mean, let me know down in the comments if you were a guy that occasionally you would flip that collar up just because you made it made you feel cool. There was something about it. I mean, we joke about it. I've seen, you know, that meme out there with all of those like a like hundred flip collars on a kid. Point being though, is at that time, and if you were a fan, this was a look that allowed you to connect with a guy and simply a collar here that we flipped up. Now guys, if you've watched the video this far, I wanna hear from you down in the comments, what is your favorite collar stop? And what video to watch next? Well guys, I got you covered with this one right here. Don't worry, it is a surprise. And I'm not gonna rickroll you, I promise it is a good video that you're gonna enjoy. One of my, one of my good ones that uh, doesn't get as much love. Yes, what am I talking about? Find out guys, click it right here. Go check it out, solid video. But uh, again, let me know in the comments down below your favorite collar style.